Hola y bienvenidos a Lightspeed Spanish. Today we are with one of our socios and somebody who's been on immersion courses with us and everything, Terry Meek. Hola, Terry. Hola, Gordon. Hola. ¿Qué tal, Terry? ¿Estás bien? Oh, muy bien. Muy bien. Me alegro. So, Terry, you you saw a video that we did um, with with uh, Mike and about him giving his experiences of learning. And it was strange because you'd already sent me some information on, on yeah. your experiences, your learning journey. Yeah. So we decided that we would do a video and talk about your learning journey. So do you want to sort of give us an overview of, of, of where you see yourself and where you've come from? Okay. When I retired, which is about three years ago, I uh -huh. retired early and I thought, what are we going to do now? What am I going to do now? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I thought, okay, I know. I'll learn Spanish. So off I go, and as we normally do, we go and learn Spanish, and we, okay. And I think I wrote you some little bits and pieces of where I went to. Uh -huh. And I basically said, you know, my way was to throw the kitchen sink at it, which I did. <laughs> you get all the books, you get all the bits and pieces, and you go, okay, I'm gonna read this. Oh, I don't know. Um, perhaps I need a bit more experience. So then you subscribe to somebody. Mm -hmm. And I subscribed to Rosetta Stone. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was uh, that. That would have been okay if it had been now, but then it was like. So then I thought, oh, I'm not getting nowhere. So I know, I'll go to Light Speed Spanish, mm -hmm. and I listened to some of your programs, and then Anna popped up, and I thought, oh, Anna, no. I'll have Anna. Well, the first lesson, she did not understand a thing, not a <laughs> word. <laughs> No, and she's looking at you, the face is going, okay. So I went I went to Anna, and she's she's actually, I must admit, coaxed me over the years all the way through. I mean, my pronunciation not great, but she mm -hmm. has coaxed me all the way through. So what you do is you go to that stage, don't you? And, he, and I've got it down here. And I've subscribed to different people, and I used it, looked at Duolingo. And I've got a, a young lady near to where I used to live, and she was out of university. So what uh -huh. she was doing, she was going to go to grammar school and teach people, teach young lads and girls, well, girl, uh, lads actually, um, Spanish. So she was great, Anna. She was great. So I went down that route. Um, unfortunately, then she had to go to um, do her uh, kind of teaching program. So that sort of fell to side. And I had Hannah. As you go through, and as I was going through, I'm sort of thinking, okay. Then you ask yourself, and you're listening and repeating and releasing, and you're trying to understand, and you progress to need help, and as I said, and then someone explains why there is se, uh, se and lo at the front and back, and or a certain tenere, and you're thinking, really? But uh, there comes a point when you think, am I too old for this? Uh -huh. And don't you? You do. You think, what am I doing? What am I doing? Am I going to carry on? Or am I not? Mm. So I got to that point and I went, do you know what? I will carry on because Anna was encouraging me all the time. Sure. Can I ask you a question, Terry, on that? How long down the road was it when you got to that tipping point of, am I going to continue doing this or not? How, how long had you been learning? I should think around about six to nine months. Right. Okay. Yeah. I got yeah. to that stage and I thought, because when what I've learned now is in Spanish and you, you're a perfect example I'd seen your, your um, podcast with Cynthia, and she asked you to translate from English to Spanish. And you're going, uh, and I'm thinking, hang about, this guy knows Spanish well. He speaks it perfectly as far as I'm concerned. And you're going, uh, then Anna, Anna clicked with me. She said, Terry, she said, when you learn Spanish, you're not learning it word for word. You have mm. to learn Spanish. Yeah. And you, you've got to get out of that stage. And I think I wrote to you a little bio back. You've got to get out of that stage where Spanish is going into this side of the head and you're trying to translate it in that side of the head. And it doesn't work. Yeah. Perfect example. I've been watching um, Jack, Jack, Jack Ryan and he's uh -huh. in Venezuela. Okay. And the words come up at the bottom in English. And I thought, I never said that. That's not, it's not, it's the idea of what they said, yeah. not what they say. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. So I that's, agree. 
that's that's where I've got. And then um, the video was, I mean, Anna's really took me for it, but then you, I'm trying to spend some time in, Sp in Spain. And as you know, at the moment with the COVID, we can't. I booked three months at one point in, in Valencia, uh -huh. an apartment, me and the wife. Then we had a bit of a family thing, so it went to a month. And I've been trying to get to Valencia. So now I'm supposed to go in October. That does not look like that's going to happen. Not going to happen. So I thought, no, I'm going on an immersion course, hopefully in April. Fingers okay. crossed. Uh -huh. And I then said, okay, I'm going to book it for next September and we'll spend a, a month in Valencia next September. Uh -huh. And Anna said, I'm coming for a holiday. <laughs> oh, lovely. Uh -huh. <laughs> lovely. So... That's where I am. And Anna was explaining, at the moment, I, I felt, when, the reason I wrote this to you, I felt like I, there was a massive amount of information I've got in different variations, which I didn't know what to do with. I didn't know yeah. how to put it together. Yeah. I did not. And Anna says, you've got this wide amount of information, knowledge, but you've got this little bit of actually um speaking spanish because you yeah. haven't been to spain yeah and it's very difficult so now she's speaking more and more to spanish in me and i'm starting to understand more and more i listen yeah. to all the programs i listen to your programs final thing i've just recently done i went to um practicamos oh yeah. Pra yeah 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 and i listen to some of her programs and they're very very good and then I bought the um, the little program they do where you have to fill in the gaps. Okay, yeah. so they give you a word and you have to fill in gaps. And I said, it's none of it's in English. It's all in Spanish. And I thought, do you know what? If I could start again, and it sounds really daft, this, if I could start again, I would not try to translate it. I would try to learn the actual Spanish without putting any yeah. translation. I might put translation at the end of the day. So it's not talking in this side of the head, just this side. Just sure. learn something, learn something. Sure. And to come back to something, we don't get paid to learn Spanish, do we? No. You should enjoy it, not endure it, okay? However. <laughs> I like that, I like that. I, however, however, <laughs> sometimes you have to endure it to enjoy it because sometimes you have to do the work. And that's, that's basically where I am on my Spanish. And I'm just getting to the point now where Anna's talking more and more. I can listen to Spanish and I can get the gist. Yeah. I read a page of Spanish. I try to read a page of Spanish a night. What I try not to do is translate it. I think I wrote to you quite a way back now where I actually yeah. was translating it as I was looking at it. I try oh. not to translate it. I try yeah. to get the understanding of what it is and not translate it. Otherwise, sure. you've, you've got this thing working in your head here and you're not concentrating on what you're looking at. That, that yeah. is the way I, I think. That is my opinion. Oh, you know, that's what I feel it is. Yeah, well, I, I agree entirely with what you're saying. I mean, I, I'll just touch on a few points that you've made, which were great points. One is you're at a stage, Terry, where you've done a lot of work, right? And mm. I'm just writing, I'm, I've just been writing about this in the new book, in the, the new prepositions book that's going to come out, about the stages of, of learning. And the first stage, like you going to Spanish, as you, when you started, you said, I went into Spanish and it's like, yeah, I'm going to learn Spanish. That's the first stage. That's the, that's the, um, the honeymoon period, the bliss period, where mm. you don't know that you don't know. It's like, yeah, I don't know that I don't know. Quickly, you get into stage two, which is where you've been, which is you start to amass. Lo you know that you don't know and you know you've got to find out. And you start to amass a load of information, lots and lots of information. But you don't necessarily do anything with that information. It's going in, but it's not coming out. Okay. Correct. Correct. And then, and then once you kind of you've learned that, then you move into what's called stage three. This is where you're moving into, and stage three is the toughest. It's the it toughest is. one because it's where you suddenly know that you know, right? But everything that you have to do, and you've mentioned the you know doing this in your head, everything that you have to do is manual. You're on manual. So everything is, is hard going. It's slow. You're having to formulate your sentences in your head. It's, it's a tough area. But the more that you stay there, the more you practice. And the more you practice and the more you speak, suddenly there you jump into the level four. And level four is where it becomes automatic. 
you don't know you know. You don't even realise. Like when you tie your shoelaces, you don't know what you're doing. Your mind does mm. it. You don't, you know, explain to somebody how to tie a shoelace. It's really hard because it's automatic. And so that's all that you've got to do now is start to practice that until you become, it becomes automatic. Like when somebody, we already have automatic stuff. Somebody says to you, hola, Terry, ¿qué tal? Mm. Right? You don't have to think, well, I have to say, uh, muy bien, it automatically comes out. Yeah. Yeah. Automatically yeah. comes ¿Cómo out. Está? So, ¿Cómo está? Yeah. So that's already built in. But then it, when it comes to having a conversation, yeah, it starts becoming quite dogged and, and, and difficult. Yeah. So that you, you, you're going through the path. And this is the, the, the stage where, where I always say, look, no pressure, no diamonds. You know, yes, it's going to be tough. You know, no pain, no gain. It's you're in the tough bit. You're in the bit where whoa, it's going to be difficult. But the value of what you get when you move out of there into and you, you have a conversation and you say, wow. I've just had a conversation and yeah. I understood everything the person said and they understood everything I said. And that's when you're in, moving into level four. So you've just got to do the work, as you say. T tell me, um, let me ask you a question. Of all of the Spanish areas that, you, you know, vocab and, and conjugation and stuff like that and, and pronouns, what what's the biggest challenge for you in terms of grammar? In terms of grammar? Mm. Um, uh, oh, I know. Yeah, just trying to do something there. Um, irregular verbs. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tying up irregular verb. Oh, let me just go back to something else to say. If there was one word, one verb, I should have learned when I first started Spanish with this there, because that comes up all the time, and it's in so many Ooh. different different sorts. It's like, oh my god. No, but. I mean, I'm just going through something now um, where basically uh, it's something where I say, I had, okay, yeah. and then you use an irregular verb. Yeah. That's fine if it's a standard verb. Yeah. Because <laughs> there's only two ways I don't, uh, you know, and whatever. Mm. But when yeah. you come to the irregular verb, it's like, ah, hang about, that's bisto. Now, how does that come? You have to just learn that. That's that's the point. You've got yeah. no alternative. There's no rule. You've got to learn it. And that's yeah, the way that yeah, one right. is. That's the most difficult, I find. The, um, the things that fall outside of the normal rules. Like exactly. You've learned the rules and then, there is, you know, unfortunately, in, in, in present tense even, something like 70 to 80 percent of Spanish verbs are irregular in present tense, you know, and then huh. you've got the irregular preterite tense, then you've got the irregular um, present perfect that you're saying, the bistos and the uh, uh, rotos and costas. And the rotos, so, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a, it is a challenge, yeah. And, and in terms of speaking, what's, what's, what, what holds you back more than anything in your, in your view? Uh, I think it's because I'm still in the English mind. Okay. I'm still there. And I haven't quite got out of it yet. Sometimes I can speak to Anna and I can run off a conversation. Yeah. Sometimes it, it might be a couple of sentences, but sometimes I can run off a conversation. And then let me explain something. She asked me a question the other day. She said, okay then, Terry, um, what's the imperfect tense of this then? And I'm like, uh, 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 and it just went blank. So yeah. there's, there's this... You know, there is a point where you come to, especially me, when somebody asks me a question straight out of the blue. When I've got something to think about and I can think about it quickly, I go, okay, I can ring it, pretty well ring it off. But yeah. when it comes to that point and you go, um, um, but you know it, that's what gets me. You know it. Sure. Sure. But it just can't come to you. Sure. It's a rabbit in the headlight situation. You know, you, when you were talking earlier about learning, Okay, and how the, one of the biggest downfalls that we have is that we rely too much on translation, going from English we to do. Spanish, and word for word sometimes, word for word. And, you know, Google Translate is great for checking your sentences, but not for making your sentences. You shouldn't do that. So um, if you think about children, when children learn any language, they have no reference. They're not translating from anything. No. They don't have anything to translate from. They don't have another language. So they learn the natural way, the way that we really should learn, which is this immersion, this total immersion, without any 
preconceived ideas of what on earth. It's just children learn through that repetition of, hang on, he keeps he keeps pointing at that and saying the word. So I'm assuming that that must be that word. And that's what children do. It's like by deduction, they work out what things mean. That's Whereas right. we want, you know, we're, we're adults and we have a language and we think that, you know, we must have everything inside of a little nice, you know, clean uh, structure. And it's not that way. It's not that way. So sometimes we have to surrender ourselves to the process. And and it's a, it's a big leap of faith to... You know, we have to regress to children. And this is the problem. I mean, how, how old are you, Terry, if you don't mind me asking? 67. 67, okay. So when you're learning, you've, you've got a bank of, of 67 years of English. Yeah, you're an adult. You know, you can explain yourself very well in your own language and everything. And so we want to do the same in Spanish because we're adults. But unfortunately, not how long have you been learning? Three years. Three years, Three years. now. Yeah. So you you are three in Spanish. You're three years old. And the problem that we've got is that we want to talk like a 67-year-old man because that's who we are, but we're only three in Spanish. And so we have to surrender ourselves to the fact that we are going to talk like a three-year-old child. How do three-year-old children talk? Not very well. You know, nah. not very well. And, and if you say to a three-year-old child, what's the imperfect... In this verb, in the past, they're going to say, I don't know what you mean, I want an ice cream. Okay? Yeah. So, you know, exactly. we, what, what, what happens is we set ourselves up for a fall by expecting far too much from ourselves. Far too much. You know, and so the, the, the line that I've got in my, in my new book is, when we make a mistake, it's not life-threatening. All that we have to say is, well, what do you expect from somebody who's only three years old? You know, that, that's that's the point. That's correct, because when you go on the immersion course, okay, and you try to speak it, and you're in front of everybody, at first, well, you know what it's like. The first day, you're yeah. like this. The second day, okay. The third day, you're going, okay, I'm going to join in on this. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what it's like. But when somebody corrects you every single day, then you start to get it. And that's the benefit of being living in Spain or being on an immersion course. And they're teaching sure. you. Because sure. you'll get, because they're correcting you. You may get embarrassed, but so does everybody else in the class. You're not the only person getting embarrassed here. So that's that's it, the benefit exactly. of that, and that's how you were just saying learn it. You've got to learn it from a Spanish point of view because you can learn to a point, but some of them Spanish phrases don't make any sense whatsoever until you actually put it together. Sure. And I say, sure, I've yeah. seen you struggle. I've seen you struggle trying to convert trying to translate from English to Spanish. So, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You know what happens, Terry, is this. And uh, and again, this is important for us to understand. We have these levels of learning, right? And, and now, in many areas, I'm at level four. That means I, I don't need to think about what I'm saying. But I get myself, if I start talking about politics or high-level mathematics or I talk about science or biology, an area that I don't know, Wham! I'm back down. I'm back down to level two. That I, I, I know that I don't know. You know, so it it isn't... A, a, but the same in English. Imagine you're having a conversation with somebody who wants to talk about quantum physics. Right? You're not going to talk the same as you are if you want to talk to somebody about learning Spanish. You know, we can't express ourselves in every subject at the same level. And so we have to come to terms with that and think, hang on, yeah, you know, if I, I want to talk... If I want to talk about Spanish culture, I can talk... The, the, the back end of a donkey. But if I want to talk about Spanish politics, I have nothing to say. I don't have yeah. any vocab, you know? Yeah. So it's, it's horses for courses, that's all, you know? And so what we have to do, we have to focus on what it is that we like, what we can be enthusiastic about, and that is, makes it much easier. And the things that we're not interested in, don't bother. Don't bother, you know, wasting your time on that because you're not going to talk about it anyway. And you wouldn't talk about it in your own language. Focus on what it is that you like. There's an interesting situation, actually. It wasn't so many weeks ago. We had some friends come to stay. And I live on the edge of the Cotswolds, so I'm mm -hmm. right down in the southwest. And um, walking across this bridge that goes across the road, there's this lady walking a dog and said, good morning. And she looked, just looked at us. And then it clicked to me. She, she had the right color skin. Uh -huh. Espanol? Si. 
Well, because then straight away you think, what do I say? What does what am I going to say? <laughs> <laughs> but you finally get there and you start talking to her. Well, they might not be perfect. It doesn't matter because she's not perfect she's back right. to you. Exactly. When we got to the fact that she's come over and she's come to see her daughter who lives here and she's just had a new baby. So you got the conversation going and you come out and you go, yeah. yes, yes, that's done it. <laughs> so Absolutely. That's, Absolutely. that's, you could, you can't believe how quickly that sort of comes to you when you think, what well, have I got to say? What have I got to say? Just relax. Yeah. Pretend exactly. you don't understand anything and then it'll come to you. It does. Exactly. It does. You know, it that's does. the key thing, Terry, is, is relaxing into it because when we are stressed, when we are anxious, when we're nervous, um, everything goes to pot. Everything mm. goes to pot. And, and, and it, it, it doesn't come out nicely. But obviously what happens is the more you practice and the more you talk with native people, the more relaxed you become and the better your Spanish becomes. That's all. You know, most people, like in the immersion courses, people come on the Monday and they're the, the mute. Mute. By the Friday, you can't shut them up. No. Now, it isn't, it isn't that they've learned a load of Spanish in the week. It's not about learning. But they've managed to calm down enough to let all of the Spanish they've l already learned over the years to come out. You know, yeah, and that's the true. beauty. That's what it's about, is getting calm. Getting calm so then you can actually use the words that you already know. It is, that is actually true. I've got, I mean, I've got your books, uh -huh. um, which I change the subject slightly. I, which I go through. Uh -huh. I've never completed them because I get to a stage when I know how much I know to that stage. Yeah. But I know that once I get past that stage, until I know a bit more, I know that I'll just be reading it and it won't be going in. Exactly. It will not be. So what I do is get to the stage, your pronouns, your subjunctive, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm now going to start using them with Anna on different pages and we'll go yeah. through it. And how much do I know? And she will then talk me through it. So okay. that's cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And our books are, are, are designed exactly that way where this, they, they get progressively more difficult. And so it opens it up to more people. More people can use those books because, you know, they're, they're, there's something for everybody for every level. And normally by the end, then you've got to make your own sentences and you've got to know the whole content. So lots of people start and they get up to the, just as you saying, get up to where the, where they feel comfortable and then they leave it and you can always come back to books. Oh, you always come, come back, back to books. It. Three or four times I've come back, I've, I've came back to the same book, you know, so, so that's, that's great. Well, listen, Terry. This has been absolutely fascinating, interesting. I love hearing about your your learning journey. And I'm sure that there are other people who also want to talk about their learning journeys, which is great because it's nice to know. You know, one of the biggest issues that, that we have as learners is we make comparisons and we compare okay. our, pro, our pro, progress with that of others. And absolutely. And one thing I always say is never, ever, compare yourself to anybody else because there's nobody like you. There's nobody who's got your specific special situation. There's nobody who's had your background, your education, your upbringing, your all, all, almost problems to learning sometimes that people have that, that are very special to them. So, you know, we, we see these, these people writing on the internet saying, I, I became fluent in Spanish in two months. And it's like, everyone goes, Oh, well, what about me? You know, I've spent five years and I'm not fluent. Those people, A, are probably lying, or B, have spent, they've got nothing, they've got no children, they've got no job, no responsibility, nothing, and they've spent the whole time learning. We can't do that. We've got lives, you've got a wife, you've got a life to live, you've got travel to do, you know, so everybody's distinct, so we never compare ourselves to anybody else. It's our journey. And when you hear them say, oh, you can learn Spanish in five minutes. Go, cool, we can. Hola. Yeah. Absolutely. And in two seconds. <laughs> Absolutely. Hola. I mean, uh, you know, there were two things that, that really, really used to cheese me off. One was all of the adverts saying Spanish in a weekend. You know, I mean, what does that even mean? Well, I could give you, yeah, as you say, I could give you Spanish in a second. Say hola, as you say. And that's it. So it, it doesn't mean anything or be fluent with 500 words. I mean, in what world are we living? Fluent with 500 words. And what are you going to talk about? God only knows what you're going to talk about. How are you? I'm all right. Are you all right? I'm all right. What have you eaten today? Well, I've had some peas. What have you eaten? That's it. Yeah. You know, it's like, for goodness sake. And the other one was this, this phenomena that happened 
in the the eighty the nineties, which was um, uh, conversational Spanish for beginners. Conversational Spanish for beginners, which is an oxymoron, which is. I mean, it's just the most ridiculous thing that a beginner can have a conversation. You know, Terry, you, you, you've spent the years. It's not easy to have a conversation. It's not. You've got to have, you've got to have that backed up with so much. And they used to sell these courses of, and people going, learning. Hola, ¿qué tal? ¿Qué tal? ¿Cómo estás? Muy bien. Eh, ¿Qué has hecho hoy? Eh, nada. And that's it. And that, you know, that isn't the conversation. That's parrot. <laughs> That's learning yeah. by parrot fashion. You know, that's not a conversation. Because then somebody says to you, Oye, ¿tú tienes un hermano? Eh, eh, and then you say, I don't even know what that is. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, I think, I, I think you're dead right, Terry. You know, sometimes you've got to endure this, but you shouldn't be enduring it all of the time. You should be enjoying it. And I think that, that it, of everything that we sh anyone should take out of this is that, you know, it's to be enjoyed, not endured. And I think that's fantastic. Thank you very much, Terry, for your, your time. No and worries. Uh, I wish you every success. Uh, oh, muchísima suerte en tu camino hacia la fluidez. Oh, okay? yes. Yeah. Sí, 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 sí. Muy bien, Terry. Okay, bien. excellent.